In part 3 of my NARDL series, I'm going to show how to interpret results of the asymmetric bounds test, which you see right here, copied over to my PowerPoint. But I'm going to go right back to eViews to showcase what we got here, right here. There are four parts to this output. The first is going to be the uh, asymmetric error correction uh, model results. The second is going to be the long run levels um, output. And thirdly, we're going to see the error correction term, which of course is uh, the uh, residual definition, which would include uh, of the uh, long run model, which as you can see would include the coefficients of the uh, long run model, etc. And then finally, we see the F test bounds test, which we already have looked at right uh, before. And in particular, we found that the statistic exceeds the upper bound critical value, telling us that the series are all co-integrated. Remember, in the absence of co-integration, then we have no business doing a long run Granger causality test. We can nevertheless proceed with short run Granger causality examination. So right back here to the uh, asymmetric error correction model results, there are two parts to it the long run component right here and then the short run component with a difference uh, operator in front of them. So concerning the long run components we find that both positive and negative shocks in uh, GDP have a positive causal effect on the dependent variable right which is occupancy rate. You can see that by the positive um, coefficients. Now similarly we find that both positive uh, and uh, negative shocks in ADR have a negative causal effect all right, on the dependent variable. Now concerning the uh, short run coefficients, first we find that both positive and negative shocks in GDP in the current period do not affect uh, the dependent variable and you can see that the positive term right here for GDP which is not significant as well as the negative right here which also is not significant. However, we find that positive and negative shocks in GDP in past periods have a negative effect. So you can see that for the positive terms they are significant. You can also see that by the neg uh, in the negative terms which for the most part are all significant. Finally, we find that negative shocks in uh, ADR both in the current and previous periods have a positive causal effect. So you can see that quite clearly right here. This is the current uh, term right here and these are the lag terms. So now, in the uh, levels equation, I'm going to speak to this shortly. Um, however, this is going to be uh, the uh, co-integrating equation with which to perf perform any forecast if you want to. And then uh, this is the error correction term uh, which uh, is represented in the uh, um, ARDL model by these uh, terms right here. So if in fact you uh, replace the long run terms right here by the uh, lag term of the error correction term the coefficient of that lagged error correction term is going to be the speed of adjustments to long run equilibrium. And you can find that directly by going to view and then you go to coefficient diagnostics and then you hover right down here to error correction form and you can see that right here quite quite nicely with the uh, correct sign it's negative and uh, also it is statistically significant. Now though for the rest of this uh, analysis I'm going to go to my uh, PowerPoint so I can show things really nicely and clearly. Before we begin with the interpretation of the long run model results I'd like to present you with this simple example right here where we have a three variable asymmetric model right here and let's say that the coefficient for x positive is negative 2.5 and that for x negative is positive 1.3. What does that mean? Right? A couple of hints right here. So we, we see here that when x increases, which is x positive right here, all right, let's blow this up, all right, that it would mean that, uh, that y would decrease. Decrease? Well, because the coefficient has a negative sign, so they go in uh, in opposite directions, all right, and it's going to decrease by 2.5 units. And likewise, when x decreases, which is x negative right there, x negative, all right, by one unit, y, the dependent variable, is going to also decrease, 
Why so? Well, look at the coefficient sign. It's positive, so they go in the same direction by 1.3 units. All right. So interestingly, you find that uh, regardless of the direction that x moves up or down, that y, the dependent variable, is always going down. So I kind of constructed this to uh, put a chuckle to you, <laughs> to your face right there. So right back here, we already have looked at this. This is the asymmetric error correction uh, model result, which is this. Uh, uh, equation that you see right here, the key equation that you see right here. It is the coefficients of the long run terms right here that are being tested in the bounce test as you can see me explain right here. So a rejection of this null hypothesis would mean that we do have uh, a co-integration. We do have long run uh, relationship among the variables. And then going right back here, so again this is the uh, long run levels equation. How did we come up with these uh, coefficients right here? Well, I actually explained these in the previous um, uh, parts to this series. And uh, again, it's going to be the negative of uh, the uh, coefficients from the uh, asymmetric error correction model uh, divided by the coefficients of the lag term. So actually, if I go to the next slide right here, you can see it quite clearly. So right back here to the asymmetric error correction model result. So you can see that this first coefficient of 30.58, we got it by dividing the negative of this 3.35 by this coefficient of the lag term of the dependent variable, which I show right here quite so clearly and nicely. And the same goes for the rest of these. So the rest of these, uh, this is a calculation, and then you see them right here. All right. So that gives us the uh, levels equation, which we can then use to construct the asymmetric co-integrating equation, aka the asymmetric long run equation. So you can find right here that what this means is that occupancy rates, the dependent variable, is a positive function of both positive and negative changes in GDP. Nicely color coded to put a delight on your face right there. All right. Specifically, we find that if GDP increases, all right, which is GDP positive, that the dependent variable would also increase. Also increase? Well, because coefficients is positive. By how much? 30.6, all right? All right, 30.6%. And if GDP decreases, which is the red guy right here, right, um, occupancy rate, the dependent variable, would also decrease again because it's a positive sign by about 26% right there, right? Now then, how about ADR? So we find that occupancy rate, the dependent variable, is a negative function of both positive and negative changes in ADR, as you can see right here. Right, is a negative function because the coefficients are both positive uh, are both uh, negative right there. So specifically, we find that if ADR increases, that uh, occupancy rate is actually going to decrease. All right, again because this is negative right here by 2.2 percent, which is the value of the coefficient. And if ADR decreases, which is the negative. Uh, term right here, then the dependent variable is going to increase, go the other way, by about 3%, which you see right there. So that's all about it. The task ahead of us right now is to determine if the difference between the yellow and the red right, for each of these regressors is statistically significant. Because if we find that to be the case, then we're going to conclude that the relationship between the dependent variable and the regressor is asymmetric. If that's not the case, then we're going to say, well, we have the regular symmetric uh, relationship. So that's going to be the business of the next video. Hope you enjoy this.